This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to Econ Movies. Today we're going to look at the economics in Indiana Jones. As you know, Dr. Jones isn't an economist. He's an archaeologist. We do not follow maps to buried treasure, and X never, ever marks the spot. Sounds pretty boring. Let's look at one of the most important concepts in all of economics, demand and supply. It all starts with buyers and sellers. You bring me no hot Here he is. Nirachi's a real small guy. They come together to negotiate a price that works for both of them. The buyer wants to pay the lowest price possible, but the seller doesn't have to accept that offer. The diamond, Lao. The deal was for the diamond. Now, if the buyer really wants that product, he's going to have to increase the price to something that the seller is willing to take. In this example, there's just one buyer and one seller. When you start analyzing multiple buyers and sellers, then you're looking at markets. To understand markets, Indiana Jones needs to find somebody to teach him demand and supply. To learn about demand and supply, let's pick a market that we can analyze. So let's pick something like pet snakes. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Let's start with demand. To have demand, buyers must be willing and able to buy pet snakes. Now obviously some people like pet snakes and some people don't. When the price is really high, let's say $100 for a pet snake, people don't want to buy very many snakes. In this case, only 10 would be purchased. After all, there's a bunch of substitute pets you could buy instead. You could buy a pet tarantula, a pet elephant, or a pet camel. No camels. Okay, okay, no camels, no camels. If the price was lower for snakes, consumers would be willing and able to buy more snakes. In this case, if the price is down at two, then consumers would want to buy 300. So this downward sloping demand curve shows you the law of demand, the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. The supply curve, on the other hand, is upward sloping. It takes time, energy, and money to breed, raise, and sell pet snakes. At a low price, sellers wouldn't want to sell very many snakes because it's not profitable. So at a low price of two, the quantity supplied would only be 10 snakes. At a high price of $100, sellers would have more incentive to bring a bunch of snakes to the market. Now we're finally there. It's time to put demand and supply together. X marks the spot. Let's analyze this graph. At a low price of two, the quantity demanded, the amount buyers want to buy, will be a lot higher than the quantity supplied. At that price, buyers would want to buy 300, but sellers would only want to sell 10. This is called a shortage. If the price was up here at 100, then sellers would want to sell a bunch of snakes, but the buyers would only want to buy a few of them. This is called a surplus. At $20, the quantity demand equals the quantity supplied. So there's no shortage and there's no surplus. This is called equilibrium. Equilibrium is like the holy grail of supply and demand. That's the cup of a carpenter. Now you understand the graph and equilibrium, but we're not done. The supply and demand graph is a great tool for figuring out what's gonna happen when there's a change in a market. For example, let's say that snakes and monkeys are substitute pets. Where did this animal come from? <laughs> now assume that the price of pet monkeys falls. How will this affect the price and quantity of pet snakes? It doesn't affect the supply curve for pet snakes at all. It affects the demand. Consumers that would normally buy pet snakes would now turn around and go buy more pet monkeys because their price is cheaper. This would decrease the demand for pet snakes, shifting the demand curve to the left. At every possible price, people are buying less pet snakes because they're buying monkeys instead. The graph shows the new equilibrium and the fact that the price and quantity will fall. Wait, why? Why does the price go down? After the demand curve shifted to the left, what would happen if sellers kept trying to sell snakes at the old equilibrium of $20? There would be a surplus. There would be way more snakes out in the market that consumers want to buy. <laughs> sellers would compete with each other because they want to get rid of all these excess snakes, which would drive the price down to the new equilibrium. Did you get that? Let's show a change again, except this time, assume the people in this market have a pest control problem. Oh, rats.
When people go to the pet store, they figure, let's get a pet that can help us get rid of the rats. What will happen to the demand for pet snakes? If you said increase or shift to the right, you have chosen wisely. The graph shows the new equilibrium and says the price and the quantity will both go up. Why does the price go up? After the demand curve shifted to the right, now the quantity demanded is way greater than the quantity supplied. This is a shortage. Consumers want more pet snakes so they can eat the rats, but the sellers are running out of pet snakes to sell. Competition between buyers would bid up the price of snakes and give sellers more of an incentive to bring more to the market. Price would go up, quantity would go up. Understanding these markets is actually pretty easy because it's just the collective behavior of buyers and sellers. In the end, I don't think Indiana Jones would want to buy a pet snake or a pet monkey. I think he'd prefer a dog. We're named the dog, Indiana. Dog? <laughs> You are named after the dog. <laughs>